The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's join the Great Gildersleeve. There seems to be a good deal of activity going on in his house. Leroy, ask Bertie if she's finished ironing my shirt. Okay. Marjorie, what'd you do with my tuxedo? Your tuxedo? I haven't been wearing it. Yeah. It came, it came back from the cleaners this morning. Someone must have put it someplace. Leroy, you going to ask Bertie about my shirt, or aren't you? Sure. Gosh, what's the hurry? There's an opera on, young man. I'll get moving. Ask her about my tuxedo at the same time. And answer the phone. I'll answer the phone. It's probably for me. Well, somebody answer it. Mr. Gilsey, Mr. Oh, yes, Miss Goodwin. He's sitting right here. No, he ain't particularly busy. I'll call him. Mr. Gilsey, Miss Goodwin on the phone. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Thank you. But I am busy. Do you know what happened to my tuxedo? It's hanging in your closet, Miss Gilsey. Oh, well, what about my shirt? It's in your dresser drawer. Already? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute, Bertie. Don't go away now. Hello, Eve. How are things shaping up? Great. <laughs> uh, look, how would it be if I pick you up around 8 o'clock? Okay, my chariot will drop your door at the stroke of eight. Shall I blow the horn? I was only kidding, Eve. I'll ring the doorbell. <laughs> am I dressing? You darn right I am. After all, an opera doesn't come to Summerfield every day. Okay, Eve. Ta-ta. Let me see now. If I... Whoop, forgot you were standing there, Bertie. <laughs> that you wanted, Mr. Gilson? Uh, yes, Bertie. Very important. I wonder if you could press my black tie, give it a little backbone. I can try, Mr. Gilson. Fine. Leroy, run upstairs and get my black tie. It's lying with my collar and studs on the bed. Gosh, all this work to go to the opera. Does everybody have to go through this? Men always dress to go to the opera, my boy. It's a tradition. Yeah? Who started it? Women, go get the tie. <laughs> okay. See a shirt, collar, tie, socks. Socks? Bertie, have I got any black silk socks? You got three pair, Mr. Gilfrey. One pair never even been mended. Well, one pair ought to be enough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. What else? Oh, yes, my opera hat. Have you seen it? No, sir. Not in some little time. I've worn it since the day I sat on the platform with the governor. Marjorie, have you seen my opera hat? Not since Leroy had it. Leroy? What was he doing with it? Don't you remember? He used it for his magic. Oh, my goodness. Here you are. Is this it? Where is my opera hat, Leroy? I thought you wanted the tie. Never mind the tie. Where is my opera hat? Upstairs, I guess. Don't guess me any guesses. Go get the hat. Okay, gosh, more trouble. Then give me the necktie. Oh, forgot. Here, catch. Oops. Here, Bertie. <laughs> you think you can do anything about it? Well, sir, I might be able to make it set up for a few hours. <laughs> That's all I ask, Bertie. Just so it'll carry me till midnight. <laughs> Then I'll come home like Cinderella. Yes, sir. A little starch ought to do it. <laughs> Marjorie, what kind of tricks was Leroy doing with my opera hat? Oh, you know. He used to pull things out of it. What kind of things? Eggs and stuff like that. <laughs> that darn kid. By George, if he's... Leroy. Were you thinking of wearing this hat on? I was. Tonight? Tonight. Let me see it. She. She. Leroy, you ruined it. Well, this hat cost me seven dollars and a half in 1922, and I've only worn it three times. The first chance I've had to wear it to an opera. And look at it. Oh, it isn't so bad, huh? Just one teeny little hole in the top. I bet it wouldn't leak even. An opera hat is not worn to keep off the rain, my boy. Oh, well, I suppose the music will sound just as good if I wear a derby.
Well, here we are, folks, in the lobby of the Summerfield Opera House, where tonight, Summerfield is to have its first opera since the year 1922. Now, I'm going to try to bring to our microphone a few of the leading citizens as they arrive to take their seats. So, if you'll just be patient, we expect to present some of these leading citizens very shortly. Pardon me, buddy, could you I'm do... I'm sorry it? we're on the air. Oh, oh, pardon me, I thought you were an usher. <laughs> Look, lovey, this guy's broadcasting the opera. You see the microphone? Yeah, I've seen lots of them in pictures. While we're waiting, folks, I might give you a little background information on tonight's opera entitled Tannhauser. It was written <laughs> by Richard Wagner, a German, and was first presented in the year 1845 in the city of Dresden, He's Germany. He's reading all that off the paper. <laughs> yeah, I saw Oh, I think I see a gentleman coming now. I'd like to present to you over our microphone. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, this gentleman is the chairman of the Committee on Arrangements for tonight's opera. Did you hear that, honey? Mr. Gildersleeve's going to speak over the air. Why? <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, will you step over there? Yes, uh, pardon me, pardon me, madam. And here is our first celebrity, ladies and gentlemen, just as we promised, Mr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, our popular water commissioner. Oh, thank you. Should I talk or sing? I just talk. Oh, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be here this evening. And as chairman of the committee on arrangements, I want to say it's been quite a job getting this opera on. What I mean, ladies and gentlemen, is that I personally have sacrificed my personal time and energy. So I Thank want to... you, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. <laughs> now, folks, Just a want... minute. I haven't finished. I didn't say anything about how good the opera is. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. Everything is timed to a split second. Oh. <laughs> now, I'll move our portable microphone around a little, friends, and bring you some of the other celebrities. At the time, Tannhauser was there. Hiya, Commissioner. Nice little speech you give there. Thanks, Floyd. Had some more I wanted to say if you hadn't been in such a hurry. Oh, well. Hi, Commissioner. What's the matter? You can't say hello now that you're a big radio star? <laughs> well, uh... Oh, Mrs. Munson. Hello. Say, is that darn announcer introducing somebody else? Huh? Who is it over there? Well, I think it's, uh... Yeah, it is. Chief Gates. Chief Gates? Uh -huh. Who wants to hear a speech from him? Now, if he'd let me develop my thought a little oh, bit. Oh, let's go over and listen to the chief. Maybe we can make him laugh in the middle. <laughs> now, lovey, is that a nice thought? <laughs> well, come on, let's go listen to him anyway. And so I take great pleasure in presenting Summerfield's popular chief of police, Don Gates. Uh, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, there was more crime in Summerfield during 1945 <laughs> than in any previous year of our history. The music, chief. Say something about the music. Arrests for every type of offense increased during the past year. Of particular importance was the rise in juvenile delinquency. The guy makes a speech for it. It's about juvenile delinquency. And in yeah. my opinion, <laughs> juvenile delinquency can only be curbed by occasions such as this one. Giving our young people wholesome amusement that will keep them off the streets. I thank you. Thank you, Chief Gates. The story of the opera Tannhauser is a tragic one. Dealing with a love and the people... Well, good evening, folks. Mrs. Munson, nice to see you again. Hi, big boy. Hi, Floyd. Hi, Commissioner. Nice little speech, Chief. You talk into that thing like you was Gabriel Heater himself. <laughs> Heaven's sakes, Chief. Why didn't you say something about how much Summerfield has needed the opera? What a great thing this is for the music lovers in this town. Well, I gave my angle of it, Commissioner. Uh, you made it sound like a punishment for criminals. Oh. Well? You like it, Floyd. You like it. Well, I'll give it a listen. Come on, shouldn't we be finding our seats? Yes, why, George, we should. Now, just follow me, folks. Okay. Uh, here well, we are. Here. Where are we going follow here? me, folks. Mm -hmm. Dark, isn't it? Our box is the next one. We have a private uh, entrance. Sort of. Here we are. Oh. See, there's Peavy. Been sitting right here all the time. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Peavy. Hiya, Peavy, old boy. Uh, uh, don't get up, Peavy. Now, I think if Mrs. Munson and Floyd will sit here and okay. Peavy over there. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I, I'd rather not sit so close to the edge, if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, Peavy, nobody ever fell out of a box. Well, maybe not, but I've always had a nervous feeling about high places. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, look at all the people way down there. Shh, catch me, lovey. I think I'm going to jump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Floyd's a clown, isn't he? Uh, yeah, very funny. For heaven's sake, Floyd, people are staring at us. Let him. I bought my ticket. Yeah. <laughs> it's a funny thing, being nervous about high places. 
Psychology, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look, look. I could drop my program and bean the president of Hogan Brothers. <laughs> Little psychological quirks. For example, I never can eat eggplant after tomato soup. Yes, yeah. Where the dickens is Judge Hooker? The show ought to be starting any minute. Some people don't like to be locked up in a small room, I understand. I tried it once and I enjoyed it. <laughs> I guess it takes all kinds. Yes, yes. Quiet, everybody. Now, here comes the orchestra. Twenty pieces. Uh, I tell you, this is going to be a real show. Hey, wait a minute. That little guy with the piccolo. Don't he hustle baggage down at the depot? Jimmy Pittenger. Sure, that's him. Hey, what kind of orchestra are you palming off on us here, Mr. Gildersleeve? For five bucks a throw, I don't want to hear no freight handler. <laughs> well, Floyd, let's give him a chance. Okay. If he's good, okay. If he's lousy, I hope he drops a trunk on his toe tomorrow. Hey, who's the guy who just came in down there with a the bald head? Yeah, that's the conductor. Now they'll start. Yeah, he's tapping. See, shh. Yeah, that's it. That's the overture to Tannhauser. Beautiful. Beautiful. Pardon me, folks. Is this box seven? Oh, for heaven's sake. This is it, Judge. Come on in. Oh, that's you, Floyd? Yep, that's me. Well, where shall I... Quiet, you. Sit down before I choke you. All right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, WSUM, the voice of Summerfield, regrets that time does not permit us to bring you the opera Tannhauser in its entirety. We urge you, however, to stay tuned to this station. My, it certainly feels good to sit down and relax for a while. Don't tell me Christmas shopping has got you down. <laughs> yes, it has. I've never seen such crowds in the stores, Mr. Lang. I'm glad my shopping is just about done. All I have to do now is pick up a few things on my holiday food list. Well, don't forget your grocer also is a very busy man these days. And with quality foods in such big demand for special occasions, I think it might be wise to get in a reminder right now about homemakers shopping early for parquet margarine. There's always a big demand, you know, for this popular spread made by the Kraft Foods Company. It's a favorite of millions. I'm glad you reminded me of that, Mr. Lang. We're going to be serving all kinds of hot bread over the holidays. And I know I can always count on parquet margarine to make them taste extra good. You certainly can. Parquet margarine makes all kinds of bread taste extra good because it's still unmatched for flavor. That's why millions of American families prefer this delicious economical spread to any other brand. So be sure to get parquet from your food dealer tomorrow. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. One of the quality foods... Made by the Kraft Foods Company. Back in the Summerfield Opera House, the last aria has died away. The last tribute has been delivered. The last bows have been taken. The asbestos curtain has fallen and the musicians have scrambled out of the pit. Ushers prowl now through the rows of empty seats, picking up lost gloves, discarded programs, and gum wrappers. On the sidewalk out in front, Summerfield's opera lovers are still milling about in their post-war finery, looking for their cars. Uh, Steve, how did you like the opera? How'd you like it, TV? Yeah, I asked you first. <laughs> I get you, me too. Goodness, Ross Morton. I hope not everyone felt that way about it. Uh, don't worry, Eve. Stick close to me now. Taxi! Hey, taxi! Uh, got away. I'll shut off his water. <laughs> Wish I'd brought my own car. Now. I thought parking would be some. Hey, Commissioner! Oh, there's that Mr. What's his name? He's calling you. Where? Sounded like Floyd Munson. In that car that just pulled up. <laughs> Come in. Oh, yeah, Floyd. Hello. Hey, nudge the ball and chain there, will you? You don't see me. Where? Standing right behind you there with a the mouth open. <laughs> hey, dreamy. Oh, yeah. Uh... Oh! Hi. 
<laughs> now, Mrs. Munson. Oh, it's you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I thought it was somebody getting familiar. Oh, no. <laughs> on the contrary, Mrs. Munson, there's your husband waiting for you. Come on, come on. Well, it's a wonder you wouldn't blow your horn. I practically blew the inside out of it. You wasn't standing there gaping all around you. Hey, Commissioner, you got a ride? Can I drop you somewhere? What do you think, Eve? By your room. Glad to take your friend there, too. It's a ride, Eve. Would you mind? The taxi situation don't look too good. Well, I think it's very nice of them to offer. How about it? Hey, thanks, Floyd. If we won't be taking you out of your way. Ah, climb in. Yeah, go ahead, Eve. Uh, Mrs. Munson, you met Miss Goodwin. How do you do? Likewise. <laughs> Pile in there, Mr. Gildersleeve. You think there's room for me in the back here? Oh, plenty. I'll just... Oh. <laughs> yeah, a little tight, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All set? All set, Floyd. Where to? Home, Jay. There's other people in the car besides you, lovey. Oh. Oh, where are you headed for, Miss Goodwin? Yeah, I'm seeing her home. Uh, she lives over on Laurel Avenue, Floyd. Yeah, I know the place. We drove by there one time. Ah, <laughs> oh, keep your shirt on. You think you're on the street? <laughs> Suppose we get going. Oh, wait. Watch it. You asked for it. There's other people in the car besides me, lovey. So just watch it, that's all. A little less help from the back seat, or a certain party's going to get out and walk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How did everybody like the opera? Oh, yes, I'm very oh, anxious to know. Oh, opera's okay for them that like it, I guess. But give me a good musical show anytime. Yeah, or a good bill of vaudeville. Yeah. Remember when we used to go to the Orpheum every Saturday night, Floydy? Ah, uh, those were the days. That was entertainment. Well, I don't care what anybody says. I enjoyed the opera. Did you, Throckmorton? Oh, come on now, Commissioner. I caught you dozing off there a couple of times. <laughs> I closed my eyes, Floyd, in order to enjoy the music more. Yeah. Well, I don't blame you. Personally, I would have enjoyed it more if I'd slept through the whole thing. <laughs> Floyd, just stick to your driving. Who asked for any advice from you? You heard the man say he enjoyed the opera, didn't you? All right, leave him enjoy it. You got a cousin, you know, that likes rutabagas. <laughs> Listen, you want to get out and walk? <laughs> Let's not discuss the opera anymore, folks, shall we? Do come inside for a minute, Rock Morton. Well, just to say good night. <laughs> At least it's warm in here. Feels good. Let's sit down. Tired? A little. Aren't you going to take off your coat? <laughs> In a minute, I'd just like to sit first. Guess I'll do the same. <laughs> All these weeks of preparation, and now suddenly it's over. Well, I think it was a great success. Don't you? Oh, I suppose they'll say so. What do you mean? Oh, Mrs. Bullard's gown was much admired, and Mrs. Pettibone's, and all the best photographers attended. Well, I thought yours was prettier than either of them. I just wonder if anyone heard the opera. Some of the remarks I overheard were so discouraging. Who made remarks? Just tell me who made any remarks oh, and all. Oh, it wouldn't do any good to threaten them, Throckmorton. That's not the point. It's just that it didn't speak very well for the level of musical appreciation in Summerfield. Well, there's always bound to be a few gripers. I was very proud of you, by the way. Yeah? When? <laughs> On the way home when you defended the opera, when you said that you'd really enjoyed it. Oh, I did. I think it was the finest performance of opera I've ever heard. Well, I don't know that I'd quite agree with you about that. Actually, the performance, I thought, was a little better than mediocre. Oh, there are the... things about it that I'd criticize if you want to split hairs. Exactly. After all, it isn't the performance, it's the opera. When you compare it to what we usually have here in Summerfield... Just what I was going to say. Took the very words right out of my mouth. It isn't the performance. It's the opera. By George, that's so true. <laughs> you know, Throckmorton, perhaps I shouldn't say this, but I'd almost given you up for lost there for a while. And now I think again, perhaps there's hope. What do you mean, lost? Well, 
I had a feeling that you were simply running with the crowd, that you cared more for the plaudits of the multitude than you did... Eve, my whole life has been an attempt to get away from that. You know, you're, you're very puzzling at times, Throckmorton. You're really quite an enigma. Oh, you think so? <laughs> I mean, sometimes I think I see a spark in you. And then for long periods, it disappears. I just get too busy. And then suddenly the spark is there again. I can see it. And I have the feeling that if it were just fanned a little... Fan it, Eve. <laughs> Don't misunderstand. <laughs> I'm referring at the moment to your feeling for music. It's one of the nicest things about you. You know, Eve, when I was listening to the opera there tonight, I suddenly realized. You know, 20 years ago, it was a toss-up whether I'd take up music professionally or go into business. My talent for business won out. But I still wonder sometimes if it wasn't a mistake. Perhaps it's not too late. You mean, you think I could... Oh, not professionally, perhaps, but you still have a lovely voice. Well... Music has always been one of my great loves. Uh, me, me, me. <laughs> uh, how does that area go? Oh, evening star, da, da, Oh, if you study, Throckmorton, if you really work. I will. I really will, Eve. I'll work and I'll study every spare minute I get. Oh, do. I'll let nothing stand in my way. I'll work till I've made up for all the years I've wasted. And then one day, I'll cast aside the waterworks and surprise everybody. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. Oh, evening star, how bright you are. Da, 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 dee, da, da. I'd only met you 20 years ago. Good night, Eve. Good night, Throckmorton. Eve. Yes? No, no, I won't. <laughs> Won't what? I won't ask to kiss you. Not till I've made good. Good night. <laughs> good night, Rock Morton. And remember, work and study. Day and night. <laughs> who understands me. Eve has faith in me. Well, I'll show her, too. Work and study. Work and study. Yes, by George, the first thing tomorrow. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
What you for? It's a quarter of nine. It is, huh? Well, close the window so we can quarter of nine. Yeah, Bertie said to tell you. Quarter of nine, eh? Well, well, what was I going to do today? It was something I was going to do. I don't know what you're going to do, but i got to get going. Hey, wait a minute, my boy. Where are you going in such a hurry? To school. Where do you think? Oh, school. I told you it's a quarter of nine. It's all right for you maybe to lie in bed till noon, but I'm only a kid, so I have to work and study all day. Work and study. I remember now. Eve. Well, so long. Uh, Leroy, wait a minute. Come back here. Now, what is it? Uh, Leroy. Don't neglect your music, my boy. Who's neglecting it? Practice your piano every day. I always do. Work and study. Those should be your watchwords, my boy. Devote every moment you can to it, because there's no greater satisfaction in life to a man than music. Yes, sir. Well, I got I want you to study and work hard, my boy, so that so that Miss Goodwin will be proud of you. Yeah, well, In I... fact, beginning the first of the year, I think I'd like you to take two music lessons a week instead of one. What? Two lessons? You'll thank me for it, Leroy. When you're an older man, you'll thank me for it. One of the greatest regrets of my life was the fact that I didn't keep on with my musical studies when I was a young man. I'd even take them up again now, if I had the time for it. <clears throat> Close the door when you go out, my boy. I think I'll catch a few more weeks before I get up. <laughs> you were up a little late last night. What a character. <laughs> <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be back again in just a moment. One of the pleasant things we all look forward to in our house during holiday time is the tempting aroma of hot breads baking in the kitchen. No doubt you'll be having a variety of baking treats in your home, too, during the coming weeks. And it goes without saying that you'll want a delicious spread to serve with them. So I'd like to suggest for your family's enjoyment a spread that's a favorite of millions, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Parquet margarine is still unmatched for fresh, dairy-like flavor. That's why it tastes so good on fresh-baked muffins, sugared buns, and crusty rolls. And parquet is easy on your food budget, too. It's only about half the price of costly spreads. So tomorrow, be sure to buy delicious, economical parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one thought before we say goodnight. In the hustle and bustle of Christmas shopping, it's very easy to forget to buy the little Christmas seals that are helping our country to control mankind's most dangerous disease, tuberculosis. The tragic thing about tuberculosis is that its spread is preventable. We know how to control it, but it costs money. Most of us have known someone who's been a victim of tuberculosis. I do myself. So I make this plea very sincerely. Don't forget to buy some Christmas seals tomorrow. Good night. It is played by Harold Curry. It is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. We'll soon be into the holiday season, and that's time for bright, tempting dishes. So add a lively touch of flavor to your foods with tangy, golden Kraft salad mustard. You can serve Kraft salad mustard in all sorts of delightful ways. This delicious salad mustard adds extra flavor zest to cooked egg and cheese dishes, adds lip-smacking flavor to gravies, relishes, and sandwich spreads. And for the special zippy flavor some folks prefer, there's a sharper Kraft mustard, too, with horseradish added. So be sure to head up your holiday shopping list with Kraft quality mustards. <laughs> This is the National Broadcasting Company. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com. <laughs>